Did you know that inside your motherboard, there is a secret sauce that's going to help give you the best performance out of your CPU and out of your RAM. And that secret sauce is, nope, wait, that's, that's just, that's just hibachi sauce. Nope, that's not it. That secret sauce is power optimization. And in this video, we are going to go over some of the common recommendations for power settings inside of the more advanced motherboards like this Hero 8 Crosshair from Asus. And we're gonna dive into what those recommendations are, how you can set them, and how you can monitor your system to know if they're actually making a difference for your performance. I am the Graying Tech, a gaming insider, and if you'd like to learn how to improve your gaming performance, start now by clicking that subscribe button. For the next several videos, I will be making use of one Usmus's DRAM calculator. Now you don't have to get it and download it here. We're gonna go through a screenshot of the power recommendations for the X57 motherboards inside of the app itself. I just wanted to let you know that that's where this information is going to come from. So before we dive into all of the settings and the BIOS and, and going through the changes we need to make, I wanted to show you where this information actually came from. So like I said, this is the DRAM calculator for Ryzen. This is 1.73. It has not been updated yet to the 5000 series for Ryzen. However, the information that I saw in here and, and from people talking on the forums, et cetera, et cetera, this is still very relevant recommendations. So once you actually have the application installed and opened, just simply click power supply system. Now inside of here, there's two columns, best for DRAM stability, best for CPU and DRAM stability. If you are overclocking your CPU along with your RAM, I would highly recommend filling out the column on the right-hand side. The left-hand side is if you're just messing with RAM, which I don't understand why you would just do that when you have a perfectly good system you could overclock your CPU with. So these are the values themselves. And the other thing I'm gonna recommend here is just take a picture of this. Take it on your phone so that you can refer to it time and time again, because we are going to go into the BIOS in order to get to the power optimization settings for ASUS, you go here under Extreme Tweaker and here to External DGI Plus Power Control. Now, MSI and Gigabyte and Acerock, all of these companies are going to have something similar to these same controls that you are going to be able to leverage and try to squeeze out a little bit more stability from your system. That is essentially what these options are for. So when you see load line calibration, what I want you to think is an old house. And when the oven or the AC kicks on and there's that dimming of the lights, maybe the fan slows down mysteriously just a little bit. There might even be a whine or something like that now and then. In terms of computers, when the CPU is in a low state and all of a sudden there's a burst of activity, and it starts to ramp up the frequency. Well, the volts don't always keep up with that ramp and you get what is called V-droop, which essentially is just a drop in your voltage before it picks right back up. That V-droop can actually cause instability, especially if you're going from low to high load. This level calibration is actually increasing that floor to maintain more voltage for your CPU. Therefore, when there is V-droop, the voltage is still adequate enough so that it can recover and quickly ramp up to the overclock setting that you have. If you set this too high, you're overvolting though. So you wanna ensure that this is a low number, but not so low that it causes V-droop to be a problem, but not so high that it's actually overvolted. So that's why I have this at level three. The recommendation here is level three or level four. And what you're looking for is, is my system still stable? with high overclocks when I go from low load to high load. Next up, we have current capability. And this deals with the fact that we're supplying the IC, the integrated circuit, additional voltage to hit higher frequencies. You need more volts and therefore you need more current. This is a setting that allows you to increase the maximum amount of current that the CPU can draw from the actual system itself 
before it says no more, you don't get any more current. And a higher number here essentially allows you to have higher current going to the IC. If you set this too high, though, you're going to increase heat because more current means more heat. 130 is what is recommended. Switching frequency. When you have a choke or a MOSSET, the idea here is let's make sure that we have good utilization of those MOSSETs. Ideally, 60 to 70% because that's the best efficiency for each of your VRM solutions. So they are operating at 60 to 70% load. Give them a little break and then have them come back. So your MOSSETs are constantly switching to make sure that the correct amount of voltage and current and everything is being delivered to your CPU. Setting this to manual and setting it to a frequency of 300 is one of those ways to make sure that you have the correct frequency. If you are going for even higher overclocks, you actually want the switching frequency to be slightly higher in value. What you're aiming for here is the lowest frequency that gives you stability, less heat, but still hitting the overclock values that you think you should be getting from your system. 300 and 400 are the recommended values. Power duty cycle. You have two options. You have extreme or T-probe. What this is essentially saying is, do you want to adjust the power as it is going to your system based off of temperature or based off of current? You want temperature if you are using standard cooling solution. You want extreme if you're doing something like maybe a monoblock, LN2, that sort of a thing. Vast majority of people just choose T-probe. Power phase control. This is the ability to let your VRMs kind of power down during idle loads. Basically discharge a certain amount of, of amperage and current. Now, you can set this to standard, which is going off of the CPU command, which isn't recommended. You can go optimized, which is ASUS's version of a power optimized profile for this. You can go extreme, which means it never powers down. It always maintains a stockpile of current always available. Power phase response is kind of your dynamic option. It's going to respond to demand faster than optimized will, but it does allow it to cycle down and, and to go into an idle state if it needs to. I have it set to power phase, but I also have it set to ultra fast, and it's going to respond very quickly to changes in demand. And I think that this gives you the best of both worlds, but, and those are the two recommendations, power phased or optimized. Power thermal control, I could only find a little bit of information on this outside of what AMD and ASUS mention here. I have always seen this value at 120. I recommend simply leaving it here at 120 and just going with it. Now, below this, you're going to see the pretty much same settings here for SOC and for the DRM solution. The SOC, in the case of the 5000 series without the integrated graphics, is mainly there to help memory management. It has the memory controller embedded in the SOC. So these values are still adjusting the same exact things. In this case, though, it's for that IC that is the SOC instead of the core ICs. Okay. The recommendations here are level two, level three, manual switching at 400, which you'll note here is the minimum. And I also have this at power phase response ultra fast. It's doing the same exact thing it would do for the core, except in this case, it's the SOC IC. Lastly, we have the DRAM. So if you're choosing to overclock your CPU and your DRAM, make sure you include this as well. We're going to bump up the current capacity to 120. Now you'll see it can go to 130, but I have found that this produces too much heat. So 120 is the recommendation. You have optimized for power phase or extreme. Remember, optimize allows it to relax a little bit. Extreme keeps it fully charged, keeping it at an extreme. And then for the switching frequency, we have this at manual, just like we did for the SOC. In this case, the minimum, which is 300. Now, the majority of these settings are really there to adjust temperature and make sure that enough electricity is flowing to the component to reach overclocking levels that you are trying to achieve. If you want to dive into even more details on this, 
I will put two links down in the description below. Now that you have all of the power information properly tuned for your system, it's time to dive into the deep, dark underbelly that is DRAM.